Glutathione is a popular supplement, and according to those companies selling it, taking their glutathione product promotes good health. But what if the opposite were actually true? What if I told you that by taking glutathione, you could potentially be damaging your health? Not convinced? Then best keep watching. Now before we go any further, let me make it crystal clear that the problematic issues we'll be discussing here today are specific to supplemental glutathione and do not apply to glutathione that's naturally produced by the body, which of course is a vital antioxidant without which we would die. However, when we ingest glutathione in supplement form, there's a big problem. But before we get into that, let's get a clear understanding of what glutathione's role in the body actually is. This will help us to understand the issues that can arise with supplementation. And by the way, this video won't be all negative because at the end of the presentation, I'm going to tell you exactly how to get your body to safely and effectively increase endogenous glutathione to optimal levels. Second only to melatonin, glutathione is the most powerful naturally occurring antioxidant in human cells. And it's commonly referred to as the body's master antioxidant serving to regulate the critical balance of oxidants to antioxidants. Our body is always trying to maintain homeostasis, and so a major part of that involves keeping our oxidants and our antioxidants in balance. Both are necessary for life, however it's maintaining an optimal balance between the two that's most important, and certainly one of the many keys to maximizing both our lifespan and our health span. Now it's very well documented that elevated oxidative stress and mitochondrial dysfunction are two key contributors to aging. And we also know that natural glutathione levels decline with age. And that in older adults, glutathione deficiency plays a major role in promoting these two unhealthy states. So of course, it would appear logical to most of us that all we need to do to rectify this age-related decline is to simply take a glutathione supplement. Unfortunately though, that doesn't work. And here's why. Most of the glutathione ingested in supplement form simply gets destroyed in the gut before it can even reach the bloodstream. So essentially, it's next to useless. Now granted, there are liposomal glutathione products available which do partially get around this issue of gut degradation. However, along with regular glutathione, I recommend you avoid liposomal glutathione like the plague. And here's why. Each tissue in our body maintains a different amount of glutathione based on its metabolic demands. And these demands are both dynamic and variable, which is why our cells regulate their own glutathione synthesis rates. However, by taking liposomal glutathione, we may deliver more glutathione to cells than is actually required. And that's because by avoiding much of the degradation that takes place in the gut, the liposomal product is then free to enter the bloodstream where it then delivers glutathione directly to the cell, bypassing the regulatory process that would have taken place with the body's naturally produced glutathione. Unfortunately, this may potentially result in health damaging imbalances within the cell. Excessive glutathione can easily disrupt the delicate balance of reactive oxygen species and antioxidants, potentially impairing cellular signaling and immune responses. In addition to this concern, it's been theorized that regular supplementation might potentially signal the body to reduce its own production of glutathione, leading to a dependency on external sources. Although to be fair, we don't have any long-term glutathione studies to confirm this one way or the other. However, to my mind at least, that fact in itself is problematic. So where glutathione supplements are concerned, our choice is either the standard product, which is next to useless, or a liposomal product, which then risks delivering more glutathione to cells than is actually required. So what's the solution then for a mature adult who wants to promote optimal health by safely increasing their declining natural glutathione levels? Well, it's actually rather simple. All we need to actually do is provide the body with the building blocks required to produce its own endogenous glutathione, which then gets synthesized in the appropriate amounts as and when required. And the most important of those building blocks are glycine and n acetylcysteine also commonly known as NAC. And when these two compounds are combined in a single supplement, it's known as Glynac, which studies have shown can safely and effectively reverse glutathione's age-related decline. Now it's important that when administering Glynac for best effect, that we combine the glycine and NAC in an approximate one-to-one -one ratio. 
However, that doesn't mean that you can't or shouldn't consume additional glycine, just not at the same time as you take your Glynax supplement. This will ensure optimal glutathione production, alleviating any natural age-related decline and its negative health implications. Regarding the optimal Glynac dosage, first let me mention there's no point in supplementing with Glynac if you're under age 40. And that's because glutathione levels don't tend to go into any noticeable decline until our early 40s. Now a good starting dosage at that age would be around 600 milligrams of glycine together with 600 milligrams of NAC. And this dosage should be increased with advancing years. Now I should also mention that your Glynac supplement should be taken on an empty stomach. So in between meals is ideal. I myself choose to use the Glynac offering from Do Not Age, as these capsules are free of fillers and contain the ideal one to one ratio of glycine to NAC. And I've got an exclusive 10% discount code for you, which will work not only for Glynac, but for any product in the range, including subscriptions and special offers. Now I'm 64 and I currently use two capsules per day for a total of 1200 milligrams of glycine and 1200 milligrams of NAC. Although I do also get a considerable amount of additional glycine from my daily use of 20 grams of collagen peptides. Interestingly, in animal studies, it was found that excess administration of NAC in isolation or glutathione in isolation actually resulted in accelerated aging. Just the opposite of what was achieved with the ingestion of glycine and NAC in combination and in balance. This only serves to reinforce the importance of how in most cases, providing the body with a balanced ratio of the raw materials it requires is optimal. Of course, there will always be exceptions to this, and that's all part of what drives scientists to experiment with what can often appear to be crazy dosages. Because without exposure to risk, progress is ultimately stifled. I hope you enjoyed today's presentation, and of course, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Lastly, as always, take care, be healthy, and I'll see you again soon.